Growing up, ramen noodles meant this for me. And unfortunately, I actually like them a lot, which gives you a bit of a glimpse into what I was consuming as a child. And I didn't actually have my first bowl of ramen noodles until I moved to New York around 2010, which is when ramen was being imported from Japan over to New York. And you're really seeing a boom in ramen shops with places like Momofuku and Apudo. And I tried a few of these places and I still really didn't understand all the hype. But then I found a local place by me in Brooklyn and I really had my moment of ramen reckoning. And I do feel like everyone needs that one ramen shop experience to really wake them up to the potential of this dish and how good it actually is. And when that happened to me, it was really all I needed to stop going to ramen shops and just start trying to perfect this dish at home. But what I'm gonna be doing today, which I'm really excited about, is giving you the foundation of ramen. All five elements that you need that are mandatory to make an authentic, tasty ramen at home, and I'm gonna do it all in one video. So buckle up because it is time to start your own ramen shop at home. Now you can make pretty good ramen at home by just throwing together a few ingredients, maybe you follow a recipe online, and it's gonna be all right. But to make incredible ramen, traditional Japanese style ramen, you're gonna need to nail down the five essential elements of ramen noodles. This was a day well spent in quarantine right here. So you can see we've got our five elements and they're all essential to really get the authentic taste. So to start off, you need your base, your bone broth or your stock. You can make this vegetarian, I've done a video on that in the past, I'll link below. Then you've got the toppings, and this is what I really love about ramen, because it starts becoming an art form, and you're plating this up, and you've got all your different toppings, and you've got all your colors. The options are really endless when it comes to toppings. Then we have our aromatic oil, so we're gonna be infusing our oil with different aromatics to perfume our ramen, and there's a lot of different aroma profiles that you can take when it comes to your own personal ramen. We're gonna cover one of my favorites today. Then we've got our tare, which is our seasoning for our soups, so our bone broth is gonna be pretty much plain. So this is where all of the seasoning comes from. And again, I'm gonna be showing you one of my favorite Thai seasonings today. And then last but not least, of course, you have your ramen noodles. But ramen noodles are very specific because they're an alkaline style noodle, which gives them a unique flavor, but also a really nice chewiness that is very specific to ramen. So all five of these elements, essential for really good, good, authentic, tasty ramen. And luckily, we're gonna be covering every single element today in this video, so let's get started. All right, let's talk bone broth. The foundation of our ramen and really the foundation of all Asian noodle soups. And without a good homemade bone broth made with love and care, you're not making a good ramen. It's just a fact. I used to try to use things like this, which I just found in the pantry to make soup. And to be honest, once you taste a really good homemade bone broth, it's hard to even know what this stuff is. It's like some meat juice and it's not gonna work for your soup. This is not pro home cooks. This is amateur home cooks and we are upgrading right now. So so the basic idea of a broth or stock is really simple. You're cooking down these animal parts to make a really flavorful liquid by extracting the flavor out of the bones, the cartilage, and the meat. And of course, you can get really complex with it. There's different cuts you can use. Of course, there's a range of animals for different flavors you can get. And I have an entire video dedicated to broth and stock that I'll link below. But today, I'm just gonna be using things that I had in the freezer because I can't go to the butcher right now. So I have some chicken carcass and then I have some pork hocks right here which have a good amount of meat but they also have a lot of bone in them as well so we have a blend of flavors here which I think will balance out really nicely but you can just use pork you can just use chicken you can use lamb you can use beef whatever you want and I would say the one thing I am missing right now is some type of pig trotter or chicken feet something with a ton of collagen which will really help jellify your stock and give you a really nice mouthfeel and also it's just really good for you when you have that collagen in your soup, but this is what I'm dealing with right now and I'm still gonna be able to extract so much flavor from these cuts right here. But I do want to take these through one process before they go into the liquid. So what I really like doing with my broth is taking the bones and roasting them first to just add a layer of flavor. So what I'm gonna do is take out a sheet pan, coat it with a little bit of oil, throw in all of the meat and bones, and then coat the top of that with oil as well and toss it in the oven. All right, so I have my oven set at 450. 
and I'll just throw those in there and roast them for about 45 minutes. You're really just going by color. And once they're looking really nice and brown, then I'll pull them. All right, so it's been 40 minutes. I did turn it down to 425, about 10 minutes in because it was a little too high. Check this out. Roasted bones right there. Now you don't need to be a genius. You don't need to understand the Maillard reaction to, to know that this is going to impart some serious flavor into our soup. Look at that, color equals flavor. And make sure you don't get rid of this fat that came off of all of this meat because we are definitely gonna use that. So I've got this on high right now. That's gonna to come to a boil. Then I will reduce it down to a simmer. And when it comes to ramen broth, there's two main camps. You can do a low and slow cook, which I'm gonna do, just a gentle simmer, and you'll get a nice clear stock, which I tend to like. I like a clear stock. If you want more of a tonkatsu feel, a nice creamy broth, by boiling this stock over time, you're gonna start emulsifying the fats and it's gonna give you a nice creamy look, a creamy texture, which is nice, but the boiling can be a bit intense, especially if you're boiling something for eight hours. And you do need to cook this no matter what, you need to cook this for a while, unless you're pressure cooking, which that works as well. But I'm just gonna get this on a nice medium heat for pretty much all day, at least a good eight hours. The longer you can cook this thing, the more flavor you will extract, the more nutrients you'll be getting into your soup. Okay, so we're up to temperature right here. You see how there's just a few gentle bubbles? We're trying to maintain that over a long period of time. Once it starts boiling, it's gonna start emulsifying the fats, and then you won't have that nice clearness in your broth. Now, another thing you can do to help really get that clearness of your broth is just skim off anything that comes to the top, like this bubbles or any type of scum that comes off the bones. Just every now and then, skim it off. And then we're just gonna pop the lid on and we're gonna let that go all day. I started this thing in the morning, which I would suggest you do. You can let it go overnight if you're comfortable with letting this sit on the stove unwatched, but I'll probably go eight hours and then, you know, we'll make ramen the next day. It's generally a two day process. You can make the bone broth whenever you have time and you can freeze it, which is great about this stuff. I always have some frozen bone broth, actually. Here's one, I think that's a lamb stock. That's a bone broth right there. It says roasted chicken chicken stock, but it's a soup. All right, so my supply is low, which is a good reason for making this right now. So ramen noodles compared to other Japanese dishes is actually more of a new age dish, which I like because it gives you a little more flexibility. Whereas a lot of these other traditional dishes, it's like you stick to the script and you do it to perfection, which is great as well. But ramen, it's like you do whatever you want. So when you go to a ramen shop, you're gonna see so many different types of toppings. So of course it's up to you, which is why it's great to make it at home because you can just kind of use whatever you have in your fridge. So for my ramen, I'm trying to strike a balance. I've got some fresh veggies, right? here, some bok choy and some carrot. I'm definitely gonna be making some half boiled egg. That's something that I usually cannot resist because it just elevates your final dish so much. And then I'm gonna be making some chashu, which is actually one of the most popular uh, toppings for ramen and it's a pork belly. And we're gonna work on this first. And the great part about this is I can actually par cook this in the stock right now to get this pork belly nice and tender. So traditionally with chashu, you get a nice big chunk of pork belly and you roll it up into a circle and you get those nice circle pieces on top of your ramen. Not only do I not have twine here, this is also a smaller piece of pork belly. So all I'm gonna do is just drop it right into my broth. And this is a great technique because all the flavor lost from cooking it in the liquid is going right back into our broth and we're gonna get it nice and tender. So I'll probably keep that going for around two hours and then I'll remove it. It's been about two and a half hours. You can see we're bubbling away with the stock. Pork belly coming out and I'll just let that sit in the fridge overnight and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that tomorrow.
One topping that is essential for me when I make ramen is the half boiled egg. I pretty much put it on every single ramen that I make because one, it's beautiful. Two, it adds some nice protein to the top and it also adds a nice creaminess because when you cut into it, the egg yolk emulsifies into the soup when you mix everything up and you can create an instant creamy texture to your ramen, which I love. And a lot of people are scared to make these things, but there's an equation. It is so simple. Once you get this down, you'll make perfect half boiled eggs every single time. Time. All you have to do is bring a pot of water to the boil, take your eggs, and I always like adding one extra egg just in case one of them cracks or screws up in the process. And then take some type of spoon, ideally with holes in it, and you're gonna take a few eggs at a time and just slowly dip them in and out of the water because you wanna acclimate the eggs to the hot water or they could crack if you got cold egg going into hot water. Then once they're acclimated, just let them sit on the bottom and set your timer for six minutes because a full boiled egg is 12 minutes. And once that's done, you're gonna take the eggs out and dip them into ice water. And the same thing, in and out, so they acclimate to the cold water now. And you need that ice water bath because you wanna stop the cooking process right at that six minute mark. Now make sure those cool for at least five minutes and then you can just start cracking the shell just gently on the table. And then you just peel the egg off, just making sure to get under that one film layer of the egg. And then as long as your eggs are fresh, the shell should just slip off and you have perfect half boiled eggs. So the next element of the ramen is the aromatic oil, which is probably the sneakiest element. I would say the most missed element, especially when you're making it at home, but it's so important. And it's a technique that's used a lot in Chinese cooking and you see it in Japanese cooking when it comes to ramen. And basically what you're doing is taking an oil or a fat and you're infusing different aromatics because oil is a great carrier of aroma. So when we drizzle a little bit of this oil on top of the soup, it's not so much of a, a flavor, like a blast to your taste buds. It's more of a perfume and essence that you're gonna be adding. And the best part about it is you can customize your oil with any type of aromatics that you want. So the aromatics that I'm choosing for this oil today are some ginger root right here, which I'm just gonna peel and then chop up really fine. I've got some scallion, which you know I love, one of my favorite Japanese ingredients. I'll chop that up really fine as well. And then right here, I have some chilies from Burlap and Barrel. This is Cobanero chili, and this will add a nice spicy kick, the only spicy kick to our ramen, which I really like. So once your ingredients are chopped up, I'm gonna take this oil that came off the bones, which is super flavorful, but I am gonna balance it out with a little bit of neutral oil. This is a grapeseed oil. It's just nice to balance out the fat with the oil so you get a nicer mouthfeel because just fat can be a bit intense. And all I'm gonna do is heat this up for a few minutes and once you throw in a scallion and it starts to sizzle, then you can take it off the stove and then just pour it over your ingredients to let them infuse. You can see that oil going to work. You don't need a super high heat, but that will just wake up all of those aromas. Now I'm making ramen tomorrow night, so at least I have a day of this infusion, but this stuff, just let it go. The flavor is just gonna keep intensifying, and after like two weeks, that's, that's the sweet spot for something like this. So what is a tare sauce? Well, it's the way we're gonna season our ramen. So rather than just sprinkling salt into your soup, we're gonna build a liquid seasoning with a lot more flavor than just salt. Now there's a million ways to make tare sauce and there's different types of tare sauces. You can use miso, you can use salt base, soy base. I'm gonna do a combination between a salt and a soy base that I really like that adds a ton of umami flavor to our soup. And remember, it's really important to get this tare seasoning really flavorful because it's gonna be adding most of our seasoning to our just plain old soup base. So to start my tare sauce, I actually soaked some kombu and some shiitake mushrooms yesterday and I let those sit overnight in some water to really start releasing those flavors. And once those have been soaked overnight, I took them out, I poured them into a pot. I added about two cups of soy sauce and half a cup of mirin and brought that up to a boil. And once it's up to a boil, the kombu has pretty much done its job. So I started to fish out the kombu pieces. And then I just boiled that for another five minutes to really bring all of those flavors together. And I just skimmed off any of the foam that was building on the top. And then you can strain off your tare sauce and that's good in your fridge for for at least a week. That is some 
beautiful flavor enhancer. Let's give this seasoning a little taste to make sure it's gonna season correctly. That is incredible, that's so good. Not only is it salty and funky from the soy sauce, but the kombu in there and the shiitake gives it so much umami that this right here, this is gonna guarantee that our soup tastes incredible. 8 p.m. I think I started this thing at 9 a.m. around then. So we're close to 12 hours on this guy. Let's take a peek. Wow. So I'll just skim the surface one last time just to get any of that scud off. And then what I can do is you can see everything just falling apart right off the bone. Pop that in here, then we can strain out the final broth. Now this stuff you can use, but really this meat will have barely any flavor because all of the flavor has now been transferred in here over that long cook. It's still really good texture. You can throw it on a sourdough pancake. There's a lot of stuff you can do this. So I like keeping this stuff rather than just throwing it out. Now that might've taken all day, but in my mind, it's well worth it because look at this. We've got golden, beautiful chicken and pork stock. And this is a bunch of servings right here because one of these, that's ramen for at least two people, maybe three. You could water this down since it's pretty concentrated. So this is not just ramen for one night. This is an open canvas of delicious soups to come over the next few weeks. And of course you can freeze these no problem. All right, so let's talk assembly. Let's talk about bringing this ramen shop experience together at your house. And it's all about organization. It's all about timing. So I like having two pots going. One pot over here is going to be my broth. I'm just gonna pour that in and heat that up to, you know, a nice simmer. So that is just the pure bone broth right there. Now over here, I've got a pot of water boiling, which is very important because I'm gonna be blanching some fresh ingredients. So I peeled some carrots and cut those up into pieces. And I also just plucked some bok choy right off the stem. So I'll be blanching those ingredients in here, but I can also throw the noodles in here. So it's really just two pots of liquid for success right now. So I'm first gonna just take my carrots and just blanch those right in there for about, I would say two minutes. You're just cooking them enough so they're nice and tender and you really retain that flavor because there's so much flavor going into a ramen. There's no need to roast these or saute these. I actually really like having some fresh ingredients to balance everything out. The carrots have been going for about two minutes. What I'm gonna do now is throw in this bok choy and just blanch that. And that only needs about one to two minutes so everything will be cooked together. Got my chashu sliced up, but let's take a quick field trip out to the grill for a second. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Big shout out to Napoleon Grills for this thing right here. This is a beast. And this is an infrared burner right here. I'm gonna throw these chashu right on there because they're very bland right now. They've got no texture, but they are tender. So I'm just gonna give them a nice sear real quick. Perfect field trip back inside. All right, take a look at this. We have done it, we are organized. Let me show you what it takes to really run your own ramen shop at home. Everything is in front of us. Everything is organized, ready to go because ramen comes together quickly. So we have our broth over here heating up. We've got our water for our noodles. We have our chashu that is seared up. Some garnished scallions. We have some toppings right here, some carrots and some bok choy. We've got our aromatic oil. And then lastly, you can't forget the noodles. 
So like I said before, ramen noodles are very specific. They're alkaline style noodles. They're super chewy and you can get them dried in a packet. These are fresh, which is gonna be of course the best. This comes from Sun Noodle Company, which supplies all of the ramen shops in New York. They actually sell them in grocery stores now, but just do your best at obtaining some good ramen noodles. See what you have locally around you in the supermarkets, maybe a specialty Japanese store, or maybe you even make them at home. There's plenty of tutorials online for that, but you do do not want to cook these long. Ramen, the experience is the chewiness and they also cook in the hot broth as they sit in there. So if they're fresh, they only need a minute to two minutes. Obviously, if they're from the package, just follow the package instructions. So I'm just gonna take these right into here. And as long as you're serving everything at the same time, you'll be totally fine. Sample noodle. Nice. No. So traditionally, the tare sauce goes into each bowl as a seasoning in the bottom of the bowl, but that's a lot of work. Um, and I know that I'm gonna season these all equally, so I'm just gonna pour this right into the soup and just make sure that the, the base soup is seasoned correctly and then we're good to go. We can skip that step. Ooh, perfect. Meaty, mushroomy, with the aromatic oil, all these toppings. We're on to something here. So noodles are cooked. Everything is prepped. I've got these beautiful ramen bowls right here. I have four of them. I'm cooking for four people tonight. I'm gonna show you a demo on how I plate one, and then I'm gonna open up shop. All right, start off with a few ladles of that beautiful amber broth right there. Three ladles is perfect. Go in with a nice load of noodles. I'll hit it with the chashu right there. A few carrots over here. Some bok choy in that corner. And this is where things really pop off. We're gonna take that egg. You'll see, perfect. Every time, every time. Place that right on the side. That's gonna add a really nice pop of color. Get a quick scoop of that oil and just Drizzle that ginger scallion chili oil. You see how it just drops up. That's gonna perfume the entire dish. Last but not least, some scallions. Now that is a sexy looking bowl of soup right there. Super well balanced in color, in flavor, and it's a complete dish. It's all you really need for a dinner, which is what I love about ramen. Now remember, this is your art form right here. Plate it however you want, get funky with the ingredients and the flavors. That's why people love ramen because there's so many unique styles out there. So make it your own, have fun with it. And believe me, making all of those elements, it's well worth it when you taste this bowl of noodle soup.